G'day and welcome to Mark and Sam After Work. Today I want to do a video on a topic that I find quite um, interesting and difficult to explain, um, but accuracy, a question that's asked in all sorts of ways um, and to try and help people get there a little bit with some of the things I see and some of the things I understand and all uh, as per usual from my perspective from what I think is going on. Um, Amongst me um, are some bits and pieces. These are not trying to be endorsements or anything like that. These are some of the places where you'll find it and we have good quality products um, and whether that's to do with the optics, whether that's to do with your measuring systems. This is a lab radar for people who don't realize it measures your bullet speed. Um, your loading processes. Um, this is a, the um, annealer, annealing made perfect machine for very good annealing. Um, bullets, all bits and pieces that um, this is one of our, this is a adjustable bag base which helps support the rifle. Um, all features that are very important um, and I'll try and explain whether that's worth it or not, not worth it for what you're doing or with, with you looking for accuracy. But really where it starts from and where it finishes is trigger time in is probably the biggest detail I would say that is where accuracy actually hides. Um, and then the ridiculous amount of details in between. Um, it's, it's not going to be that short a video, but I'll try and go through that. So I suppose to start off with the fundamentals of what's going on with the rifle, um, or yeah, with a rifle is what we're talking about, and a precision rifle largely is what we're talking about, as to how to make things accurate. Um, uh, the, they come into, I suppose, where a lot of my decision or my, yeah, the decision to make this video comes from some fundamentals of where that question is asked. One is um, what caliber is more accurate um, and then another one is what's that load because that's where the two things where people think accuracy comes from. Either the particular cartridge, um, caliber isn't a very great term actually, caliber is actually talking about the hole in the bore uh, but we use it to actually describe a lot of the times what cartridge or actually, what that rifle is chambered in. Um, and I suppose I'll, I'll touch on that and say that that isn't where I believe accuracy lives at all. There are rounds that are more efficient, there are rounds that are faster, there are rounds that are easier to load, there are rounds that are um, easier to get to use with a magazine. They have different jobs. So whether it's a hunting round or it's a long range target round or it's a defense round, all that sort of stuff, they have different jobs. Those different chamberings can certainly different different jobs. But when it comes to actual accuracy, that isn't a place where it lives. They they work perform differently, but accuracy is largely all able to be hidden in every cartridge. Um, the specific load is probably more the um, issue that that I have a problem with, and that is because for the majority of the world, the way you get a cartridge to perform or go around a rifle to shoot more accurately is by specifically loading. Um, and a little bit of that is real and a little bit of that I have a problem with that. Now let, let me try and break that down a little bit. Um, the logic of load data is, is done on a couple of levels. One is we all pretty much know that if you take a, um, a factory load, um, an average factory load compared even a, a, even a match factory load, um, that they'll shoot quite well, but they're not going to shoot as well as you can make a load shoot in your chamber, in, in your rifle. You, you go through and do the work and you will largely be able to make it perform better than any factory load. Now, there are a couple of things going on there. One is the, the actual way they do the loading side of things in, in a factory side of things is never going to be quite as specific as what you can do if you're hand loading everyone and measuring everything very, very, very precisely. So you get exactly the right amount of um, powder. You get, um, you're get you using generally a better bullet than what you're going to find, not always, but generally a better bullet than what you're going to find. Um, you've done more prepping and more finishing off your brass. So you're very go everything is done in a very precise level in, in to whatever level you go to, but it's generally that is one side of it. The other side of it, which a lot of people will tell you, is that they've found a load that makes that rifle work well. Um, and to a degree, that really does happen, and to a degree, in some cases, that doesn't happen so much as people think. But that's the difference between factory load and hand loading. Um, 
Where my problem runs into it is when we start talking about um, nodes. So when we start talking about the fact that at, let's go a, on not particularly any cartridge, but let's say we're doing up a load and we find that we've got between 56 grains and 58 grains. Um, and there were people that will tell you that at 56 point eight grains I had a good node and then another one at 57.6 grains and another one at right on 58 grains and those were the three nodes where it grouped the best um, and then I chose this one here and that's I did some more development and this is where it came up to and this is the node for me. Now the logic without without getting too complicated is various things but largely talking about vibrations down the barrel and where there is a sweet spot to where the muzzle is not moving as much um, through the shock down the barrel um, and at that point that's where the that rifle shot the best um, and i'm not saying that doesn't happen I, I have some issues with how that reacts in different temperatures and all that side of things but that isn't my problem my problem is that i don't do that at all um, what i do do is i run put in powder i try and find a pressure point now that pressure is about what it looks like and what it behaves like so i look at the back of the the, um, the primer i look at the stamping on the back of the brass i lo look at the bolt lift i look at um, how that varies in different temperatures and i try and make sure that that's at a place where i'm up at the higher level because i'm trying to get um, the reasonable speed out of the round but not too high I don't go to the level of pushing for the extra speed um, through a couple of logics one I tend to find once you get more temperature and things that will get to where you start to get a sticky bolt you start to wear out your brass faster you start to whether it's in larger primer pockets or whatever it is you'll start to go there but I also tend to find that the group tends to open up a little bit you tend to find that when you're at the high level of things you're pushing, there's the, the simple logic to go with that is with more bang, there's more shock, there's less consistency. Um, but equally, I'm not the type of person that goes down to the bottom, as some people will do. It shoots nicer at very low powder levels, um, which is obvious why it does. The, the rifle is smoother, so it takes less setting up. Um, it's a little nicer to shoot down there, so some people do that. I would tend to say if you're down there, you're probably using the young, wrong cartridge and you should step back from, let's say, a 300 Win Mag to a 308 or a 65 Creedmoor or something there and come back down where there's less bang and it, the bullet works nicer down there with using things to a reasonable percentage of what they're designed to be used. So, and I suppose that's what I'm talking about. What I do and what I'll explain what I do is that I go through and simply set up to where I get a nice, high level, not too high pressure, and then I make the rifle shoot. A comment that I'm sure annoys some people dramatically, um, but it's what I've always done. Um, and it works, you see what my rifles shoot like, you see what they group like, that is with that process. So it means when people are after a specific load because they want that magic load to be able to shoot like that, you see where my problem is. I don't have a specific load. I have a load, and I should say also, largely my loads normally stop on a grain. They aren't 0 0.6, 0 0.7, 0 0.2, 0 0.1, 0 0.3. Sometimes they are. Sometimes I've moved things a little bit because of pressure. I've moved generally down. But largely my grains are 60, uh, my loads are 42 or 43 or 62 or 72 or 80 or 92 or 220. They're, they are what they are, but they're a number. I don't tend to stop on a point. I tend to stop on a grain because of that same thing. I'm after consistency, but I don't, I'm not looking at notes. Um, so the, but that will change. That is not the same for every chamber. Um, and there are things that I will tend to do in pushing bullets forward and matching bullets to the longer bullet to suit the chamber so that I can run more powder and that side of things um, without running too much pressure is the way I load things. Now, that gets into, am I saying that looking for nodes and things is wrong? No, I'm not saying that whatsoever. If it works for you, absolutely, that's good. And, there's, and, and I suppose I'd also have to say a couple of things on that point. One would be that I've said that going too high, I don't do and I don't recommend. And that's for a couple of reasons. The simple logic 
for what most people are chasing high is there's a little bit of we all know in this world is faster is better you know mine's longer than yours so mine's better um, well listen it's not you'll tend to find that accuracy doesn't live in pushing to the the 11 tenths it, you come back down to where you've got good speed and I suppose what I should say is I understand the logic of the faster it is the less winds going to affect it so that means that it'll it'll get to target faster so that will make it more accurate well I would tend to say you'll find that out in my experience at least let's go not what you'll find let's go with what I what I've seen is that that more speed causes a little less consistency tend to see changes especially as things warm up um, and chambers warm up and that sort of stuff that tends to find less consistency and the simple logic I'm working on is that explosion becomes less or more erratic because it's closer to the threshold by coming down that little bit the same as making horsepower with an engine by coming down a little bit and getting more consistency actually wins the race actually gives you that better group which is what you're chasing um, the next bit of it would be the load development um, and I suppose I see this as a, as a double-edged thing um, the likes of your extreme spreads um, this like I said lab radar it's a good system it's a bit of a pain too to be completely frank with you um, the consistency of using this in the wind I've got to get and I'm still waiting to get the um, to get the remote trigger which I think will improve the system but that means that it's it's hard to work things out with with in the in the outside conditions I've found with the system at this moment um, a little inconsistent but I have had a good run at using it to see what is actually happening on a little bit with extreme speeds a little bit with um, with the standard deviations a little bit with speed it's a little bit for the audience um, and people who use this sort of stuff um, listen I suppose what I'd say is that I think they're a very very good tool but I also think some people focus on that too much what am I trying to say there um, I suppose I'll say that out of, out of what I get and I have a lot of comments and questions people that say they have very good extreme spreads are also saying their group isn't very good now what it tells me and I suppose there's another place that I can go to is that I know in speaking to gunsmiths there's guys who are wearing rifles out during their load developing process now I see that as two things I see that as one thing for people who are focusing on trying to get that ridiculously low extreme spread and 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 that's all their focus is and that's all they want to do well hey listen awesome you know we're, we're all doing not all I suppose most of us are doing this as a as as enthusiasts and trying to end up with some knowledge and get a better lobe and some people live vicariously in the fashion of they have a, a rifle that shoots is set up for shooting two miles and only shoot at 100 yards because that's all they can do that's all the range that's all they have access to and listen good on them if that's what you like doing and you like doing that then great you know wear barrels out doing that side of things or just go and do like that um, for people who are frustrated by that and don't understand it well understand that you don't uh, well I suppose I don't need to do that I don't do that I tend to find that the accuracy is comes from I, I do it in grouping but I also doing it do it doing what I want to do which is the long stuff now I get I'm very lucky and I think that'll come back to when I start to explain where I think my accuracy comes from but that is the fact I do get to shoot at the extreme long range and that's where I try and make it work I don't bother with the hundred yards and to be truthful I have done a little look at this but I don't use a the the, the speed or the ESs and SDs to get my accuracy um, I see some places where this would be verified in doing that some that situation in other places where the the speeds moving around and the group isn't and some places where the groups moving around and the speed isn't um, so there's more going on there I, I won't try and break that in too much I want to do more understanding of before I get to that place but I would say that the way the rifle shoots and the way I perform as a shooter is more relevant in from what I've seen of my grouping and how my rifle shoots um, so like I said people who want to do that great awesome but people who are frustrated by it um, I would only get to a point where it's making sense I do more focusing on in way of trying to make things group 
I certainly make sure I have good products. So I want good brass that behaves well. I want good bullets that are nice and consistent. Um, I want, I, I use a good powder that I know is fairly or very temperature stable. Um, the likes of the annealing side of things, I'll go through and do a proper analysis of what I've seen out of it in, in a season of using the annealing side of things. Um, and I would say there are little benefits in some places. Certainly for people looking at that really consistent, better brass life, um, really consistent brass, then listen, it, definitely a good annealer and something that can analyze like these things um, is really, really important, works really well. Um, does it affect all of the grouping? Do I get better groups out of everything? Well, in complete honestly, no, I don't. Um, I have seen some that have been improved and I've seen some that haven't been changed. Um, I'm pretty gentle on brass. I'm not a PRS shooter. I'm not a F-class shooter where I'm doing one thing all the time. So I, in those places, I would think that I would, from what I've seen, I would see little benefits on top of things with lots of use of that brass. Um, but for situations where I'm only using brass occasionally, do my extreme long range shot or the, the, the project I'm on, do that, that sort of stuff. It, it, there's no negatives to it whatsoever. I've used it on everything. But I wouldn't say I've seen gains everywhere either. So the simple process of making that brass perform well and finding its happy place, and that's doing all of the proper prep work to your brass, which I've been sure and downloading videos on that. But whether that's unifying flash holes or that's the, the proper deburring, trimming, um, <laughs> neck turning, whatever that brass needs to get it to its happy place um, is the most important thing. Um, the likes of annealing and other sort of stuff can help keep it there, but um, that, like I said, that comes down to different bits and pieces or the different brass and what it actually needs. Um, the likes of, I've got my bag base here and the likes of that is the other place which I find and probably to be honest, second to the shooter, um, the most important detail. Um, I should say, I've skipped over optics. Optics certainly help. They don't make anything more accurate, but they help the shooter be more accurate. Better optics, good glass, good consistency type of thing, recording data and in MOAs that make sense or mill that makes sense and keeping that dead accurate all the time. Yes, for your first shots and dialing on a target, yes, it's important more important that that stuff is a top level for your recording data to make sense of things. So, so you get things under control so you can do your, like I said, your development side of things and your um, recording side of things to make sense of everything is all about this side of it. And it certainly is easier if, with the, the, the clearer you can see. It's easier to be more accurate. This here being my adjustable bag base and using a bag properly using a bipod properly, setting up a rifle so it performs properly is probably the place where I have found most my accuracy. And I suppose that gets into a weird bit of the conversation. And that is how the rifle actually performs, which is a combination of shooter and rifle and how they actually behave during recoil. Now I'll say something that I've said a million times and I'll say it another million before I finish doing this stuff. Um, and that is that a bullet it, the job of the shooter is not just to click that trigger with the rifle held dead still. When you that trigger breaks, the bullet, the 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 primer fires. It lights the powder. The powder starts to explode. It pushes the bullet out. It goes down the barrel. Now that might all happen seemingly instantly, but in the world of milliseconds, it's a long way from instantly. So that means from that from how your trigger actually behaves after that trigger breaks, which is your hand, your arm, to how the rifle performs. So the barrel moves, the action moves, everything actually is doing a wriggle through that process to harmonics that are shooting up and back up and down the barrel to how the muzzle brake performs to how the rifle runs off your collar bone, shoulder blade, shoulder pocket, wherever it is that, not shoulder blade, but your shoulder bone, wherever that rifle is actually pushing back to. Um, although most of that stuff happens after the, right, the bullet has left, some of it and the beginning of it happens while the bullet is traveling. And as I said a million times also, if you do, and if everything does exactly the same thing every time, then that will be an accurate rifle. 
Now, given the fact that the crown's cut properly and given the fact that the, um, the bullet release is proper, if it happens the same, exactly the same every time, the bullet will go to exactly the same place every time. But because as things wriggle, they don't tend to wriggle exactly the same. And as we're humans and we're squishy and we move, even our collarbone is actually squishy when you hit it. Um, things move differently. So this comes back to my comment of trigger time. Now trigger time doesn't just mean pulling the trigger, dry firing a trigger. It means actual time shooting. Um, and the more you are familiar with what you're doing, the more you're feeling familiar with that platform or all platforms, the more you're familiar with that style of shooting, whatever it is, the more familiarity, the more muscle memory you have, the more understanding you have, the more your, the better your rifle is set up, whether that's heavy barrels or that's heavy chassis or that's um, correct positioning of, of butt pad heights and of cheek rests and of scope heights and all those sort of things. The more that stuff gets into the into the right place, the better everything performs while that bullet's leaving, the more accuracy you'll find. But then there's a couple of things that get a little weird in that place in saying that, okay, if I set up the rifle perfectly, then, then it should just work. Like I said, trigger time, the human's very much involved. But I'll explain a couple of the weird bits to try and help make sense of that. I'm sure we all have friends or all have rifles or we've all seen this process where there are rifles that are bare, bo bare bone stock, light sporters that still shoot lights out or, or hole in hole sort of grips. Um, heard the stories at least. <laughs> and when you watch the rifle shoot, it bounces up off the bag or however it's shot. It moves erratically, but it keeps hitting exactly the same place. So that makes a complete and utter lie of the conversation about things shouldn't move and they should stay still, doesn't it? Well, no, it doesn't because it falls back to the, if it happens exactly the same, every time you'll get the same result. Um, and what I'm, and, and to some places, I try and make sense of that myself. I've seen it myself. I've certainly heard it a thousand times. And there's a couple of things I make sense of. One is one, Three, one three shot group does not make a perfect shooter, okay? So if it happened once, doesn't mean it happens all the time. If it always happens, that's a different conversation, but because someone does a three shot group and then that's a brilliant rifle, shoot straight all the time, well, you know, maybe try another three shot group, see if it still does the same thing. So there's that, that is probably half of those stories, at least. But there are rifles that really do shoot like that. Now, why is that? What's going on? Well, like I said, it comes into the fact that it's doing exactly the same thing. And in some cases, or my summation, my logic to go with that, is in some cases, the way the rifle mounts up to that person, even though it moves a lot, it does have so much control of the situation because it does move so much that it is getting to exactly the same place each time. Uh, and you'd prove that by, by managing to make it not move, whether that's bolting that down or that's putting it on a different shooter or behaving differently, you'd find the point of aim would be very different. But it doesn't matter, still shot really well. And in some of those rifles, actually trying to make them better actually starts to make them worse. And that's because of that big erratic movement to start off with. When you start to try and control that, you start to make it more erratic, less movement, but more all over the place. And listen, like I said, that, bit gets conversa that conversation gets weird. Uh, and I'll leave it at that place and go to the opposite side of things is that rifles that there's some rifles that seem to shoot so well they've got everything they've got the big target barrel and they've got the super fast round and they've got all the weight in the world and they still you watch a group on them and they're only holding down an inch and a half group at 100 yards or an inch group at 100 yards and how can this rifle shoot like that how can that be possible it's got this really good extreme spread it's got this really good everything else but it's still shooting how's that possible well couple of things to keep in mind there. One is in, in the, simply the shooter is still a big part of it. Unless if the shooter is engaging differently each time, that can change things. In some forms, that's what free form or free, uh, whatever you call it, when you don't load the rifle at all, you just let it fire. That's where that logic comes from. I believe that engaging the human correctly, this big shock absorber correctly actually makes any rifle shoot better but 
in some places rifles are set up to shoot with almost nothing on them with all the harmonics taken care of in themselves. But keep in mind that it's something that is, that is very relevant that a lot of people seem to miss. When you run that big heavy barrel, but it's a big long barrel and it's 36 inches or 38 inches or 40 inches or 42 inch barrels, even 45 inch barrels some people run. And the simple logic to go with that is that we're using a lot of powder, it tends to be a big bullet, big, big cartridge, there's a lot of powder, there's a lot of room for acceleration, it gets very quick at the end. But in being so long, the bullet is in there for a long time. So those harmonics, those shocks, all those things are more going, uh, going to be more happening through that rifle as that bullet is leaving. Because it's in the barrel longer, because it's a longer, longer barrel. So that tends to be what you're ending up with. You, there, there is not, there, there, <laughs> the, the bigger is, is better is not particularly the right thing in those places. And there is a balance. More speed is not, gen, not always going to be the best result. Um, and, and I don't want to say they're not all, I don't, I don't want to say all long barrels are inaccurate because of that, because that's not the case at all. But it is one of the things to keep in mind when you're going for more and more and more, there is another factor that goes involved with it. What I would, I suppose, where I'm coming back to um, in, in my logic of how things perform comes into the fact that all of these things are relevant, but it's the combination of these things that work. What I would come back to is that the best accuracy I've seen comes generally, and in most cases, it'll come back to the shooter. Now, I find pretty good accuracy in what I do. I don't believe I'm a different human. I don't believe that the results I see are much more than a combination of things. Certainly, I'm a mechanic slash engineer, so I look at things in a different fashion. I tend to work with rifles. I tend to do that sort of stuff. But I, as a human, also do that. How I engage, I definitely see that the, there are times where my group is, or I'm getting a different result, and I can feel that I did things differently, and I get a different result. So by engaging, and the only reason I can do that is that I do so much shooting. And I believe that's where my accuracy really comes from, is that I shoot a lot. I am out doing the type of shooting that I'm doing all the time. I have lots of trigger time shooting the way I shoot. I also am very fortunate to have the area to shoot into, so I get to analyze groups at 3,000 yards and at two miles and at 2,000 yards. I get to analyze what's going out there. So I have a real advantage over most shooters in the world because I have somewhere close and I have a vocation, a job, a setup where I can actually spend time doing this. It still costs me money. I still have to put the effort in, but my enthusiasm with my sort of brain, with a really good spotter to help me see what can't see, with really good teamwork, is where my accuracy comes from. Um, and it comes back to, and I'd finish on, like I said, where I really started, trigger time is probably the biggest detail. Everything else, whether you are spending a lot of time measuring your speed, when you're spending massive amount of time on your load development on looking after your brass, whether you've got lots of money in optics or you've done a lot of work with your rifle, all those things are important details and I don't want to discredit any of them. Uh, for people who are spending too much time or frustrated with how much work it takes to do a load development, I would probably step back and look at it in a different fashion. For people who love doing it, do it. But really, for all of us, the better shooters come out of the people that spend more time doing it um, and thinking about it while you're doing it and making sure you're trying to improve all the time and understand it all the time. But it comes back to, yeah, trigger time. Anyway, um, I hope, listen, I hope that made sense. I hope that wasn't too much, just like rambling. Um, everybody, stay safe out there with this crazy part that the world's in right now. We'll all be through it soon enough, I think. Um, and um, do as you're supposed to. Stay with your quarantines. Do all the bits and pieces. Help the health system. Do the right things on that side of stuff. Um, and... Um, like I said, look after yourselves. We'll catch you next time. Got it! <laughs> it hit! Got the coaching! Awesome shot! <laughs> hit the gas!